producing all moving and non-moving beings. Prakriti is Durga. Shristi stisti palaya sada sata eka chayeva yasya bhubanani bivati durga. That's the word, that's from the Brahma Samhita. The entire cosmos is created by Durga in cooperation with Lord Shiva in the form of Kala, time. So iksata loka nusraja sa imam loka asraja. This is the version of the Vedas. I Tareya Upanishads 1, 1, 1 2. Maya happens to be the wife of Lord Shiva, and thus Lord Shiva is in the association with Maya. But Lord Vishnu here assures Lord Shiva that this Maya will no longer be able to captivate you. Him. Omagyan Timidandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Ti Namine Namaste Zarazwari Devi Gaudavari Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakopa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Beva Cha Patita Nam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Tetanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So Maya is bewildering everyone. That's the actual definition of Maya. Maya has many definitions. Maya means the external energy, and Maya also means that energy which bewilders others. It's called the illusory energy. Illusory simply means that it appears in one way, but it's something different than what it appears. <laughs> like something, just like you might look at a nice cake, piece of cake, but inside of it is poison. So you can't see the poison, but you think the cake is so nice, and then you eat the cake and you die. <laughs> so the the hidden element is the illusionary energy, Maya. But she presents herself in a way that attracts the living entity to engage in her service. And she's very powerful. As it says here, Shristi Stisti Palaya. Who? Shristi means cre creation. Stiti means maintenance, and Palaya means destruction. She can create, she can maintain, and she can destroy. Sadhanega, Sakta Eva, Chayeva. She's the shadow of Krishna. And she's not real in the sense that she has substance. But it's an energy like the shadow. Just like if you see it, the shadow of a person, it has the same form of a person, but it's not the person. The person is not the shadow, but the shadow has the same form. So in the same way, she's called Chaya. Chaya actually means shadow. Sometimes we give that name to uh, a devotee girl in our movement. I know one lady, her name is Chaya. Chaya means shadow. It's also the uh, name for uh, Durga, which is one that, you know, is something different than what it actually is. So, And to be able to recognize that is practically impossible. Every living entity in the material world is bewildered by Maya. <laughs> Especially the attraction to the opposite sex. That is the strongest form of Maya. And that keeps the living entity locked into the cycle of birth, Mitch, life after life after life. If one can break the attachment to the opposite sex, one can break all the other attachments that Maya presents. That's the strongest of all attachments. <laughs> uh, so that that illusionary energy is very, very powerful, extremely powerful. And um, we even see Krishna demonstrated a few times just to give us a little understanding. Here, the example is being used by Shiva and then Brahma. Brahma chased after his daughter, 
for sex life. And because of that, he had to give up his body. So that and these are great, powerful controllers, and we they appear to be bewildered, bewildered by the material energy. Krishna also, when he was in Vrindavan, when the cowherd boys entered into the mouth of Agasura, Krishna was acting like, uh oh, we're in trouble. He became what we say momentarily bewildered, but. Krishna is the controller of the material energy, so he's never bewildered by that energy. But just to demonstrate to us how powerful Maya is, and she's very powerful, no one should ever think that they're free from the influence of Maya. One should always take shelter of Krishna. Even Srila Prabhupada, when Prabhupada was um, in New York, he was with some of his disciples. And he was, he was, he was praying, and the devotees were asking, "What are you praying?" And Prabhupada was really praying. Prabhupada was saying, "I'm praying that I don't fall into Maya." <laughs> so here is a person who is completely transcendental to the material energy, fixed in devotional service. He's praying also, not to fall into Maya. So Maya is strong. Sometimes we make some advancement in Krishna consciousness and we can feel we're feeling we're feeling clear, we're feeling kind of powerful, we're feeling like everything is going nicely. We start thinking we're okay. <laughs> but that's that's part of Maya's program also to make you think you're okay and then when you're not looking pow! <laughs> And then you're down again. Oh, what happened? <laughs> so, yeah. So they be, always be aware that the material energy is always active. And she's always trying to bewilder you. And here we see, now this is a powerful benediction that Lord Vishnu is giving to Lord Shiva. He's telling them, <laughs> you know, you, uh, you're in association with your wife, and your wife is personification of Maya. She is Durga Devi. She is known as Parvati, Uma. What are some of her other names? She has so many names. Sati. Um, she has so many names. Bijaya, Chandi, Bhadra, Bhadrakali. When Maya appears in different forms, she takes on a particular form according to the the energy she wants to exhibit. Just like when she's in Bhadra Kali, she entered, she oh, she comes in sixteen arms. <laughs> sixteen arms. Wow! Now that's powerful. Eight arms on each side. That means that she just she's crushing the demons. I mean, just. It's mass slaughter of the demons when she appears in Bhadra Kali. And then when she's in Kali, Kali also is a name, Bhadra, that's also Durga, so many. So she's very powerful and she can be also very ferocious too. It's like earthquakes swallow up cities sometimes. <laughs> that's Maya. <laughs> So, you know, she's very, very... So the one should never think, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm, therefore, one always thinks, let me remember Krishna have every moment. That's the only way I can free myself from the influence of Maya. Because by remembering Krishna, especially when we remember Krishna with devotion, but even if you don't remember with devotion, simply by remembering Krishna, you are protected from Maya. Is Krishna, uh, what is that, Bully and uh, I can't, can't, what is that, Maya Shakti, I can't think of the verse, where Prabhupada says, if you look forward, you'll see Krishna. If you look to the right, you see Maya. If you look to the left, you see Maya. You look behind Krishna, you see Maya. You look everywhere, there's, Maya is everywhere. But therefore, only look in one direction <laughs> towards Krishna. He says, a little left, Maya, little right, Maya, little this way, Maya. Yeah. Maya is everywhere. <laughs> so keep your consciousness focused on Krishna, and that's Krishna consciousness. <laughs> that's what it takes to come.
to be absorbed in Krishna 24 hours a day. And, that, and that's easy if we're always chanting Hare Krishna. The, the formula for, for success is to have, to develop your japa where you can chant nicely 16 rounds. If you chant 16 rounds nicely, then throughout the day you'll be easy, easy to remember Krishna. If your japa is not so good, or it's kind of whatever, it's if it's offensive or spaced out, then the day also becomes more of a struggle to remember Krishna, to do your service, like that. So therefore, strong, and Prabhupada wrote one statement, one should chant 16 good rounds. That's the word he used, good rounds. We took, we made that into a poster, and we posted it on a wall in the Chicago Temple, and a big, it's still there, big, big frame thing, you know. And he's Prabhupada's talking to the temple president. It's your duty to make sure all the devotees chant sixteen good rounds. <laughs> good round. So if we have good, strong japa, and then we're pretty much you know, ready to take on the, the struggles throughout the day. And it's easier to remember Krishna. It's more natural to remember Krishna. So there. And then we can chant throughout the day, too. Chant at any time, any place, anywhere. Nam nam akari bahuda nija sarva shaktis. You can chant at any time, any place, anywhere. Even if there is devotees who chant in their sleep sometimes. So there so that's the that's the protection. Of course the chanting is one of the ways to remember Krishna. We come every day to see Panchatattva. We take a, a mental snapshot just like you take a camera and you make a photo and then you look at the photo you're seeing what that image was that you took a photo of. So in the same way let the mind take a photo of Panchatattva or your favorite deity could be Radha Krishna or you know Jagannath or whoever your favorite deity is. Take a mental photo, keep that in your mind, <laughs> and then you're always in that consciousness because the form of the Lord is transcendental, the name of the Lord is transcendental, the uh, qualities. If we're remembering the qualities of Krishna, like just how kind Krishna is. When Krishna was um, in Dwarka, one very poor Brahmana who was Krishna's previous classmate friend, Sudama Brahma, he was so poor that he, he had to go out and beg food every day just to eat. And his clothes were just very ripped and old and soiled. But he was Krishna's classmate when they were younger. They were in this, this school of Sandipani Muni. And they were, one time, uh, Sandipani Muni's wife told Krishna and, and Sudama to go to the forest and gather fuel, some wood for firewood. So they went into the forest, and it was a winter time, but a storm came. It says it was an unseasonal storm, a storm that was out of season. And it rained like crazy. And it was so rainy that it's described that Krishna and Sudama got lost in the forest. And so it was cold, so they just stayed together t with each other until the next morning Sandipani Muni came and found them and brought them back and glorified them for their determination to serve their spiritual master in such a difficult situation. When, Sa when uh, Sudama you know, now he's older, he's married, he has a very nice wife. She wants, she's tired of living <laughs> with nothing. <laughs> she wants some regular food or maybe even a house. Their house was just broken down shack. So she said, Krishna is your friend and he's in Dwarka. Why don't you go see him? So he's not inclined to go there and ask anything for Krishna. But his wife says, no, no, just go see him. It'll be nice. So he's thinking, yeah, maybe I can go see my friend again. <laughs> so he goes, so his wife goes out and begs some 
rice and then uh, um, she's begging from the different neighbors and then she gets a little bit of rice and then she gives it to him, ties it in a little piece of cloth and hangs it on his charter. And now he has something to give Krishna. And it's just some broken rice. So he's, uh, he goes to see Krishna. And when somehow or other he got through all the guards, you know, Krishna's in Dwarka, you know, these are all these palaces with all his different queens. And you know, there's guards, you just can't walk in. <laughs> but somehow, while he was walking, a group of brahmanas joined him. And they all walked together right through the guards and then they came to the palace of Rukmini where Krishna happened, to, well Krishna was in every palace at the same time. <laughs> he expanded himself in 16,108 forms to be with each and every queen. And he's with Rukmini and then he, he comes into the doorway, Krishna sees him. And Krishna runs over to him, welcomes him, and Krishna's got tears in his eyes seeing his own friend again. And he embraces him, and he welcomes him, and he takes him, he brings him on a little bedstead, and he sits him down there, and he starts washing his feet. And then he takes the water after washing the feet of his, this Brahmin, who's dressed really like, you know, you know, Rukmini's looking, and she's thinking, my God, <laughs> his clothes are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> He's got holes in them, they're dirty, <laughs> but that's all he had. He never had any more than one set of clothes. So he would, at the night, he would wash his clothes before going to sleep, and then overnight he would dry them, and then that's all he had. So, yeah, Krishna's just treating him like, like a, just like, like a special, special guest. And then Krishna starts talking to him and saying, do you remember when we were in, our, in the school together? And then they re, he related how they were in the forest and how they got lost and the rain came. Krishna is showing him so much affection and just so much kindness and love and it's just amazing. Rukmini is looking. She's not sure what to think. <laughs> Who is this Brahmin? <laughs> and some of the palace members too, they are also looking. Krishna is showing so much of affection and so much kindness to this Brahmin. Who is he? <laughs> he must be somebody special. Dai tattva ki jai. So this is one of the qualities of Krishna. He really loves his devotees. And Sudama was a pure devotee. And he was a Brahmana also. So when Krishna saw him, Krishna just, you know, opened up his heart in so many ways. So this is, if we can remember these qualities of Krishna, how he deals with his devotees, how he shows love for his devotees, or how he kills the demons. <laughs> That's another one of his qualities, you know. When he fights with the different demons, how he deals with them. And sometimes he, you know, talks to them and then kills them. Sometimes he doesn't say anything and just finishes them off. <laughs> so Krishna has so many interesting and most amazing and most unpredictable qualities. You can't, you don't know, you can't think about how he's going to act. So if we remember Krishna's qualities and his pastimes, then we're associating with Krishna directly. So his names, his forms, his qualities, his activities, even his pure devotees, even his personal paraphernalia that he carries, just like Krishna carries a flute, he carries a cane, like that. When he's in the forest, he carries a bugle horn. These are always with Krishna when he's in Vrindavan. He blows his horn. Sometimes he plays on this flute with Balaram, like that. So he does all kinds of things, you know, he, he's like, you know, he's just, he loves to sport around with his friends or with his devotees like that. Now these qualities of Krishna are so, so amazingly attractive that when the Supreme Personality of Godhead 
simply appears as an ordinary person and, and acts as an, in an ordinary way, it's extraordinary. <laughs> it's no more ordinary, and it was just like, you know, you get, you just think, this is so nice, <laughs> what Krishna is doing like that. So yeah, and then you then you get an idea what is Krishna. And then the more we know about Krishna, the more Maya is not there. Yeah. And uh, and just like Bilva Mangala Thakur says, I uh, bhukti, material enjoyment, mukti, liberation, are knocking at my door saying. My dear sir, can we do some service for you? <laughs> Bhukti is material happiness and mukti is liberation. Two personalities come to say to the devotee, is there anything we can do for you? You're fully engaged in Krishna's service. We want to serve that person who's so, so engaged in Krishna's service. So the, what Prabhupada's saying is that when you're absorbed in Krishna's service, you're already liberated. And Krishna provides all material things. You don't have to worry about it. He's, he's going to give you whatever you need. Sometimes people want to, they want to fulfill some of their material desires. And they're in Krishna consciousness. I just tell them, just increase your devotion to Krishna more and more. And when Krishna's pleased, he'll give it to you. <laughs> Yeah, that's like that. But of course, we don't worship Krishna to get the material things. It's just that when we, when we increase our devotion to Krishna, Krishna becomes more and more inclined to reciprocate with the devotee. Oh, that devotee needs that. Okay, I'll give him that. <laughs> oh, that devotee wants that. Okay, that lady's looking for a nice husband. Okay, I'll show him. I'll show her where to find one. <laughs> That guy is looking for a nice wife. I'll arrange that also. <laughs> so yeah, so Krishna's like that. And when Krishna sees his devotee absorbed, then Krishna is always reciprocating in so many wonderful ways. This is Krishna, <laughs> like that. So then, then Maya becomes, as we said, Maya is very powerful, and that's true. But Maya becomes less the more we're engaged in devotional service. Even though Maya is there, we don't forget that Maya is. We 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 don't forget Maya is there. But sometimes Maya, she just she just it's like she's not even there anymore. <laughs> so that's how powerful the mercy is. But here we get a special little feature here that Lord Vishnu is telling Lord Shiva don't worry you're in association with your wife and she's personification of Maya she's the she's the she is the material energy persona she won't bewilder you anymore <laughs> I guarantee so what is Krishna doing Krishna is sh showing us one point that if Krishna gives you a particular blessing, then it's, you got it. In other words, if Krishna says, all right, I want to give this thing to this person, I want to give this quality to this person, I want to give this service to this person, it happens. <laughs> so the idea is to please Krishna, not to get something, but this is how Krishna re rewards his devotee. He, we want to, pro we just like, we want to become more, uh, what we say, fixed in our devotional service. We pray for that. And we associate with devotees who are fixed in devotional service. And then it becomes more natural. So Krishna says, oh, they're praying for that. And now they're showing their prayer in action by taking the association of, of senior devotees. Therefore, Krishna gives that blessing. Krishna is very kind. <laughs> he's very kind. And he's always there. And of course, he's in your heart. He's situated within the heart of all living entities. He's know, he knows our every thought. He knows our every desire. 
at every minute. He knows you more than you know yourself. <laughs> In fact, he knows you completely. <laughs> He's all-knowing. He knows every living entity perfectly and completely and any part of the creation, in, even in the spiritual world. Krishna knows everything. And, but he's localized in the, the heart of all living entities. And therefore, he knows, he speaks to us in our heart. Therefore, it says in the Bhagavad Gita, when the mind and senses are fully controlled, the super soul is automatically, automatically reached. Then happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, heat and cold are all the same. One sees gold and some rocks as being the same. In other words, when your mind is fixed in devotional service, then you're in connection with Krishna in the heart. And Krishna talks to you. He talks to you. He tells you what you need to know. He answers your questions. He guides you. He does everything. He's with you at every second. But when we're still looking for material energy out there, then what happens? We can't hear super soul in the heart. <laughs> because super soul's voice is not the loud voice. That's like some Maya will speak loud to you. Hey! <laughs> Over here, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for that. You had 10 pieces of pizza, but we got another brand of pizza coming up, and this one's even better, so don't leave yet. <laughs> and you can't even walk. <laughs> so, you know, Maya is always reminding us in a very loud way. But Krishna's voice in the heart is soft and sweet. It's not the loud voice. When you hear the loud voice, be careful. <laughs> it's the soft, sweet voice in the heart. But in order to hear that soft, sweet voice, we have to be very, the mind has to be fixed carefully in Krishna consciousness, devotional service, as explained in the Bhagavad Gita by Krishna himself. Then the dualities of the material energy no longer exist. Everything, everything amalgamates as being Krishna's energy, whatever it is. Well, you don't even dis don't make I mean, even distinction between the energy, but you just see the energy for what it is. And then on the higher platform, when one is fully in love with Krishna, one can see Krishna everywhere, everywhere, and every he's there in his form, within all of the existence of the material energy. Prabhupada describes it: one will look at a tree, will see the form of the tree, but will see the form of Krishna within the tree. <laughs> that same form you see. And when you see him as his deity, you'll see that same form within the tree or within the floor or everywhere because he's there in all his in transcendental form. But that's a high stage of consciousness. But it's available if we're serious in devotional service. Like that. But it takes, we have to be fixed in our Krishna consciousness. And that's, and that's the most important thing, to realize that there's nothing but Krishna consciousness. Material energy is simply arranged to, to bring us to more and more states of suffering and struggle. And ultimately rebirth in this material world. And as Prabhupada says, when you take birth in the material world, you don't know what birth you're going to get. You don't know whether you're going to be this form or that form. <laughs> and if you are playing too much with the lower modes of material energy in this life, then you get a birth in a lower species of life. Mm -hmm. If you walk your dog all the time, just like I go out, I can guarantee every time I walk out in the street here, every day, there's somebody walking their dog. <laughs> I just came out this morning, somebody's walking the dog. Last night when I left the temple, somebody's walking the dog. Who's walking, the dog or the person? The dog is walking the person, really. It's not, it's not, it's not the other way around. <laughs> the dog is saying, let's go this way, okay. Let's go that way, let's go, okay. 
And sometimes the person gets a little annoyed, pulls back on the string, and the dog goes, ah, I want to go this way. <laughs> Walking the person. <laughs> and then in America, people carry these little buckets and with some shovels and some plastic bags because if the dog passes stool on a, on a sidewalk or anywhere, they have to scoop it up. So you see these big people all nicely dressed, scooping up all the dog do, putting it in a little plastic bag and carrying it with them and have to find some place to dump it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so next life there'll be a dog. <laughs> And they get to pass stool and somebody else gets to clean it up. <laughs> so, that's the material energy. Whatever you desire in this life, you become like that in the, in the future. Okay, so these are some of the... So Maya is there, but for a devotee, just remember Krishna and Maya can never touch you. Any questions? Well, it comments. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have a microphone? Yeah. Oh, here. Well, no, this is not it. Somebody must have took it home with them. They needed a microphone for their kirtans. <laughs> okay, well, just I'll you speak loud, or you speak, and then I'll repeat the question for the recording. It's got the it's, it's on the it's on the cord there. Okay, just just make it. The stronger you have your sadhana, the easier it is to remember Krishna throughout the day. Then even when you're out there, you can remember Krishna. Yeah, even if we're not in the temple, it doesn't mean we can't remember Krishna. But it'll depend on how, much, how strong your chanting is, your sadhana. It becomes easier and easier. Mm -hmm. So the key is to strengthen our sadhana. Sadhana is the basis. Sadhana leads to seva, seva leads to sadhya. Sadhya is the goal. Mm -hmm. Now sadhana consists of chanting, reading, and our service. Is that correct? Yeah, temple activities. So all these areas must be strengthened. Right. Okay. And that has, especially your chanting. Especially chanting. Mm -hmm. That's why I always recommend devotees chant their rounds early. Try to finish your rounds before seven before you take breakfast. That's the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You know, you can do many things to help you remember Krishna. Sometimes you're walking along and you trip. You say, oh, Krishna, until you remembered Krishna.
Uh, don't go away. I have some Maha Prashadam for everybody after the class. Hare Krishna. Um, this is the question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, question. What is the nature of our contact with Krishna? Sometimes I hear we shouldn't think we can have direct contact with Krishna. And sometimes I hear about devotees that have direct contact with Krishna. Like you told about Sudama Brahmana. And is the, ho and is the holy name direct contact? The holy name is direct contact, but it's the quality of your your devotion that awakens that realization of that. So everything is in proportion. So as we approach Krishna, we can we we we'll, we 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 get different experiences. For instance. We can understand that Krishna is taking care of me all the time. That's one of the experiences in Krishna consciousness. We know he's taking care of us at all times. We have that faith. Or a little higher, and we know that, you know, whenever I need something, Krishna is there to somehow or other remind me what I need or what I need to do. He's always, he's telling me every minute. That's another connection with Krishna. Because Krishna is in the heart. But higher than that, if you want to associate directly with Krishna, that's that's for the that means pure devotee. So different levels of, of connection have different symptoms connected with it, and that's all. But if we're associating with those who are advanced in Krishna consciousness, that will bring that will bring you more advanced in Krishna consciousness. That will help you become more uh, connected to Krishna. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha Sarva Sastri Hoy, Lavamatta Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhi Hoy. Yeah, it's powerful. One moment association with a pure devotee, one can be free from all material desires, material reactions to material activities, you know. Uh, Guru Maharaj, where can we read about the different levels, as you said, uh, Smaranam, going on all the way to Samadhi, uh, where can we understand the symptoms and the signs? Well, there is... When you get to smartam, smartam is Krishna consciousness. Shravanam is Krishna consciousness. Kirtanam is Krishna consciousness. But smartam formulates the consciousness where you are remembering Krishna now. And smartam has five stages. And that's the intensity of that memory increases more and more up until the final and fifth stage. Samadhi. Mm -hmm. So that's mentioned. I've read it many times. I think it's mentioned in um, Nectar Devotion. It's mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada mentions it. But I think the Goswamis or the Acharyas talk about that, those five levels more. Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the Sanskrit terminology, but um, you just go for smartam and then look for some of the characteristics of smartam you might find. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Anything else? Okay. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai.